Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to worship this evening. I'm Glenn Kleppe. This is Zion Lutheran Church in Pine City, Minnesota. And for those of you who are joining us for our online video, during the season of Lent, we recorded our Wednesday services and put them on for Sunday. And so they were different readings. You didn't get the Sunday readings online. You got the Wednesday ones that I used for my series on Jesus, Seven Words from the Cross. Well, now after Easter, we're going back to our standard procedure, which is tonight on Wednesday, we're recording this on Wednesday, uh, we will have the readings for next Sunday. And my sermon for next Sunday, yes, I got it done four days early. Are you impressed? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> four days early and three days after Easter. It really was a little bit of a tight turnaround this week. but. Um, so it's next Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter readings and that sermon. And that's what we will do now through the, uh, through the summer. Uh, it, it will always be the previous Wednesday will have the same readings as the following Sunday. Not that that matters to any of you, but it matters to me because I'm a Lutheran pastor. So I care about these things. Uh, but uh, that's, that's the text that we will use Tonight, we will be using the pink sheets, order of service number one, and we begin with M463. Please stand for singing. <laughs> Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy is the Lord, the Almighty. He was, He is, and He is to come. He is worthy of glory and honor and power. He created all things. By His will they came to be. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain. Worthy to take the scroll and break the seals. By His blood He purchased for God. People, People of every race and tongue. Of every folk and nation. Christ made of them a kingdom. And a priest to serve our God. And they shall reign on earth forever. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Please be seated. The first re reading for the second Sunday of Easter is from... Acts chapter 5, verses 29 through 42. Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do to these men. For before these days, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. 
Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Our second reading from Peter's first letter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. <coughs> though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them until uh, when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our hymn of the day is number 465.
Amen. The text for our consideration is Acts chapter 5, our first reading for this service. Uh, it's about the disciples uh, being brought before the Sanhedrin, the, the group that judged Jesus and sentenced him to death. And they are told not to speak of him, and yet they go out and do it anyway. This is our text. Please be seated. I'm not a morning person. Linda could probably verify that for you. I don't know if I even believe necessarily that there are morning people and night owls, but I know that if I get up early to get things done, I'm usually kind of sluggish. and I make mistakes, and I'm not terribly productive. I can do pretty good work at 10 o'clock at night or 11 or even midnight, but I'm not a morning person. However, one day every year, I set my alarm for about 5 o'clock a.m. or so, and I get up and I get busy. I do that on Easter. Thank goodness it's done for the year. <laughs> I've always celebrated Easter by going to the sunrise service, even before I was a pastor. Later in the day, there's generally a family get-together, but I still think that the sunrise service is the highlight of my Easter. How do you celebrate? What's the highlight of your Easter? Do you dye eggs? Do you have a big egg hunt? Do you get together with family and eat ham and cheesy potatoes? I saw someone on Facebook that was having shrimp scampi for Easter. Sounds good, actually. Easter is one of those days that we generally celebrate and we usually have some customs that we follow. There are things that we do to celebrate that particular day. How about that first Easter? How did the early followers of Jesus celebrate the fact that he had risen from the dead? It would seem to me that for the most part they didn't celebrate on that day at all. Certainly it wasn't a planned celebration if there was one. They didn't know about the resurrection. I think they didn't even suspect that Jesus would rise. They were confused. There were reports about Jesus being risen from the dead, but many of the followers had not seen him, and, and, and they thought that those reports were false. Upon seeing the empty tomb, Mary asked the gardener, or so she thought, it really was Jesus. But she asked him where he had put the body. She didn't believe that he'd risen from the dead. It was unbelievable, even to his closest followers, that he would rise. Not only that, but they were afraid. They were afraid that the Jews would want to do to them what they had done to Jesus. So they were hiding. Some of them had seen angels, which is also a cause of fear in Scripture. Notice the first thing an angel says almost every single time is, don't be afraid. Those followers of Jesus were confused and scared and hiding, and certainly in no mood to celebrate on that first Easter. Over time, though, those followers learned the truth about Jesus' resurrection from the dead. He personally appeared to many of them, probably most of his followers. The more they became used to the idea that Jesus was alive, the less afraid they were. They went from being confused and fearful to being excited and faithful. In fact, many of Jesus' followers celebrated his resurrection by telling people about it. Our first lesson today is a good example of this. The apostles were healing people in Jesus' name and becoming quite popular and famous. So the Pharisees had them arrested and put in prison. An angel came and let them out of prison, and their immediate response was to go back into the city of Jerusalem and to preach about Jesus. And they went right to the temple, the religious heart of the, of the city, and they proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to all of the Jewish leadership. Even though they had been told not to mention Jesus, they continued to preach him to everyone who would listen. The same disciples who locked themselves in a room because of their fear were now boldly telling 
of Jesus, even when they were threatened by the Jews. The Pharisees celebrated, celebrated the resurrection of Jesus by arresting and trying to kill those apostles. It's hard to say that was a celebration. It was, however, their response. They had killed Jesus in the first place to try to keep him from becoming popular. They thought if they got rid of Jesus, his followers would stop talking about him. But they had misjudged the disciples, or rather, they had misjudged Jesus. They would misjudged how God could work through that group of disciples. They did not fade away like the Sanhedrin thought they would. In fact, no punishment seemed to scare them away at all. They continued to tell everyone they could about the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, and it really was for them a celebration. The text tells us that the, the apostles rejoiced that they were counted worthy of suffering. They were filled with joy, not only that Jesus had risen from the dead, but also that he had give them, given them the privilege of proclaiming that resurrection to the world. Their opportunity to witness was a cause for celebration. Every day they did not cease telling the good news of eternal life in Jesus. Every day they did not stop celebrating the fact that Jesus is alive. Every day they did not cease worshiping their risen Savior and Lord. Their celebration of Easter didn't really start on Easter Day, but it seemed to go on without end. In fact, the celebration of Easter in the church has never stopped. Most of those apostles were eventually put to death for their faith. And when they were put to death, followers who had heard the good news from them continued to proclaim it. And it was passed down from generation to generation, and now 2,000 years later it's come to us. We have the good news of Jesus' resurrection and eternal life, and it's ours to proclaim The celebration of Easter isn't really about dying eggs or finding candy. It's not about eating ham and cheesy potatoes or shrimp scampi. It's about living the life God has set out for you. It's about receiving the good news of Jesus with joy and letting it transform your life. It's about being a witness and telling everyone who will listen what Jesus did and what he continues to do in you. It's about worshiping. Not just at sunrise on Easter morning, but every day of your life. It's about singing his praise, receiving his forgiveness, and making him the number one priority in your life. Sometimes people feel like they've suffered for Jesus Christ. Maybe we have at times been rejected or laughed at. Maybe we've been ignored or brushed aside. I've been told that my opinion doesn't matter because I'm a pastor. But we've not suffered like the disciples did. They proclaimed the good news until they were put to death for it, and they were joyful that God considered them worthy to do that for him. Now it's ours to proclaim. Christ is indeed risen from the dead, and it's the best news ever. He died for our sins, and now he's alive to give us the gift of eternal life. Tell that wonderful good news. Take a break from talking about the fabulous weather we we're having, or take a break from talking about what a good season the twins are having, and talk about Jesus, what he's done. And that's how you celebrate Easter. Confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For faith to believe the resurrection of Christ and to trust the forgiving words of his servants, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all enemies of the church, that their hearts may be brought to repentance, and for all Christians, that they may be strengthened in faith and vocation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the households of our church, that Begotten in holy baptism, we may grow in his grace and share together in his forgiveness and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the authorities God has placed over us in federal, state, and local governments, that he would give them the desire to serve with integrity and honor and to work for the benefit of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and sorrowful, for those who mourn, and for all who stand in need of our prayers, we name them now. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For confidence in the mercy of Christ and glad hearts as he greets us with peace, that we would be forgiven, renewed, and strengthened by his body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that out of your indescribable grace, for the sake of your Son, you have given us the Holy Gospel and instituted the Blessed Sacraments, that through them we may have comfort in the forgiveness of sin. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may heartily believe your word, and through the Holy Sacraments establish our faith day by day, until at last we obtain the eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Meals prepared. Please come forward for the distribution.
Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith, faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. school kids on a Bible study called Christians in a Woke World. 
uh, dealing with some of the strange ideas that we see in the world around us today. Um, the, the elders are leading a study for the adults on, on witnessing your faith, which is kind of the theme of, of my uh, uh, sermon uh, this evening. So uh, that's also a good study. So if you're available on Sunday mornings, uh, you might want to participate in that. Uh, we also have a rummage sale coming up in a couple of weeks. If you have anything you'd like to donate to that, bring it in sometime when the office is open, which is usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, uh, or else just call uh, to see if somebody's here to let you in. Um, uh, we're collecting things, and then it will be uh, the 6th, 7th of, 6th and 7th of, no, 5th and 6th of May. 12th and 13th of May. 12th and 13th of May. Uh, it's the same time as the uh, community garage sale, whenever that is. It's coming up soon, in a few weeks here. So, so if you're doing some spring cleaning, I know it feels like summer today, but if you're doing spring cleaning, uh, you might want to bring some of that in and we'll sell it uh, at our rummage sale. The, the money uh, is going to be divided up between various groups. I'm not sure who all. I know some of it will go to missions and some of it will go to the youth to go to the next youth gathering. And I think maybe the preschool is getting a portion of it too, but I'm not sure all the details on that. But uh, if you'd like to participate in that, uh, uh, there's also a sign up down the lower level. You can sign up to come and actually help with the running of the, the rummage sale, which is always a, a good, uh, good thing to help with. Um, if, if you would like to take one of these Easter lilies home with you, uh, the altar guild is tired of keeping them alive. Even so, if they didn't, there's like four times more. Yeah, so. yeah. Even if you didn't buy one, if you want one, uh, please uh, come on up after the service and, and grab one. Uh, we would like to have them in people's homes being enjoyed. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.